Hello, and welcome to our presentation, Taking a Page from the Scholarly Communication Notebook to Transform LIS Education. We are Maria Bonn, an Associate Professor and the Director of the Masters of Science in Library and Information Science at the School of Information Sciences at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Will Cross, the Director of the Open Knowledge Center and Head of Information Policy at North Carolina State University. And I am Josh Bullock, Scholarly Communication Librarian at the University of Kansas. The intersection of Open Educational Resources, or OER, and Library and Information Studies or Science, or LIS, is the original theoretical foundation for our work. Librarians are extremely active and visible in the open education advocacy and support landscapes, but examples of OER for teaching LIS topics were and remain relatively few. Outside of LIS, there are OER spanning almost every academic discipline because the benefits are so obvious. Increased access to learning material because OER are free of cost. An innovative instructional opportunity because OER are free of most copyright and reuse restrictions due to open licensing. But by and large, librarians aren't learning from OER and aren't magically exempted from the inaffordability of textbooks in LIS. This seems like an opportunity better meet the needs of LIS learners and instructors by engaging them in the use of OER on LIS topics created by field-based practitioner experts. That might also lead to greater familiarity with OER and open licenses, which is valuable to a growing number of librarians. So that's where we started, considering an open textbook for our own area of expertise, scholarly communication. In 2017, we got a planning grant from IMLS that enabled stakeholder research and a convening in Raleigh, North Carolina, where about 40 very smart folks doing Skullcom work, as well as ourselves, spent a day and a half brainstorming, critiquing, and complicating our notion of what the product might be. The result that took further shape at that convening and through many conversations with colleagues at various conferences is an open book that will be titled Scholarly Com Communication Librarianship and Open Culture, Law, Economics, and Publishing and which will be published by ACRL under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. This book, which we are still in the process of creating, consists of three parts. Part one is an introduction to the concept of scholarly communication librarianship and the social, economic, legal and political, and technological forces that shape and inform it. Part two deals with the major relevant open movements, open access, open education, open data, and open science and infrastructure. Each of these sections is edited by an expert in that space with contributing author authors of their choosing. Part three consists of about 25 short pieces from field-based practitioners who provide their perspective on a Skullcom topic, examine its intersection with another aspect of library work, or present a case study that explicates a relevant topic, issue, or problem. While work on this project has been delayed by the pandemic, it has progressed and we are pouring additional energy and wrapping it up as soon as we can. More detail is available on our project site, lisoer.wordpress.ncsu.edu. While we still believe in the value of the book just described, we also recognized with the help of our peers that a book is inherently limited by its format. It's linear, relatively static, and even when we include as many people as we can, its perspective is narrower than the reality of our work and the many people who do it, the positions from which they do it, the type of institutions involved, and the issues and perspectives on those issues represented. Maybe in addition to the book, there should be something more modular, open to greater participation and capable of growth, especially as scholarly communication continues to evolve rapidly as it presently is. We also got excited about a concept closely aligned with OER open pedagogy or open educational practices, which entails renewable assignments, authenticity in assignments, uh, which is those that deal with real problems or engage in public discussions or in public facing resources, and students as creators. We're particularly inspired by activist scholars Robin DeRosa and Rajiv Jangiani, who have written and spoken on these issues extensively and who created a platform called the Open Pedagogy Notebook. We're so excited about the textbook, but we also know that any textbook is necessarily somewhat static and hierarchical. So we're developing the SCN with generous support from IMLS to be a dynamic and inclusive living community resource. 
The SCN is both a supplement to the book and a freestanding community hub. It will be first a site for open pedagogy and renewable assignments. We hope that courses will draw in materials from the SCN and contribute back the new materials they create in the process of their coursework. We also hope the SCN will be a bridge between education and practice. We hope that it will broaden, diversify, and update the topics and examples taught in LIS programs and be used for inspiration and self-education in the field. Finally, the SCN has been intentionally designed to fill gaps and create opportunities for underrepresented voices so that we can work towards our highest aspirations for scholarly communication. The platform we settled on is ISKME's OER Commons, where the SCN is set up as a hub. Partnering with OER Commons enabled us to take advantage of their existing platform and support, which is ideally suited to our purpose. It enables easy deposit and description, indexing and discoverability, and we loved features like some basic metrics and the ability for users to rate and review contents. There are currently seven collections or sub areas of the SCN. Open access, copyright, open education, open data, scholarly sharing, including repositories and library publishing, impact, and a section on the what and why of scholarly communication. To bring in the existing body of OER, we've invited a set of community curators focused on finding, evaluating, and describing discipline-specific materials. They'll also write a summary of what they find and what's missing, and especially the opportunities for development in that particular field. We're hoping each curator will be able to identify between 30 and 50 works over the next six months or so, and then we, Maria, Josh, and Will, will curate the What Why Skullcom collection. In addition to collecting existing content, which should result in between 200 and 350 or more works added, we've been sponsoring the creation of new content through three calls for proposals, the first in the winter of 2021, the second in the summer of 21, and right now, closing on December 17th. Roughly 35 works are being created through this process, with creators paid for their work again, thanks to the generous support from IMLS. So far, this has resulted in some fantastic new content, some of which Maria is going to discuss momentarily. We're also excited about works currently in production and those that will be created this spring as a result of the final call. Just as our core collaboration is a bridge between practice and instruction, we hope the SCN can connect librarians with LIS faculty and LIS students to our collective and mutual benefit. We see huge potential in open pedagogy as we pursue these goals and are intentionally centering diversity and inclusion in our collaborations, collections, and content creation. All of this activity, we hope, will lead to greater integration of SCALCOM topics into core curricula and build community in the process. And while our focus is on scholarly communication topics, we think there's potential to replicate these practices in other topical spaces to build a more open and accessible curriculum. As you can imagine, we're eager to see the scholarly communication notebook used. I'll share here some of our hopes about how it will be used. As one of the project leads and as an educator, I benefit, benefit in many ways from the scholarly communication notebook. It's personally and professionally thrilling to be part of such an engaged community of practice and to watch the ways in which the members of that community challenge and support each other and witness their commitment to building a sustainable and equitable system of scholarly communication. I teach about academic libraries and about scholarly communication, and I learn all the time from that community. I learn about topics and about developments, a learning that helps keep my course offerings timely and relevant. And I benefit from having so much ready-made course material. You can see here the collections, and we'll just refer to those, in the scholarly communication notebook. Collections that map very nicely, not entirely coincidentally, to the topics in my scholarly communications course. In fact, I'll be teaching a section of that course this spring and populating my syllabus and class activities with these open educational resources. Timely and engaging material, that bonus, comes at no cost to the students. Here's one specific example. SCALCOM 2020X, created by Stuart Baker at Western Oregon University. It's essentially a text-based video game, a cross between a short story and a website, where the user clicks links or types in commands to move a character 
through the game's plot about a day in the life of a scholarly communication librarian. I'm intending to use it as a sort of pre and post test, having the students play on the first and final days of class in the hope that they are more successful after a full semester of engagement with SCALCOM topics. And so I see the scholarly communication notebook in my classroom, but we also imagine it as being useful for the field, helping scholars and the librarians who work with them to tool up and to stay current. For instance, Chris Diaz at Northwestern University has created a lesson plan and tutorials for teaching and learning about static web publishing for digital scholarship. A lesson plan that could be implemented in a workshop developed for those new to communicative modes for digital scholarship. Or a veteran librarian, curious about the increasing attention in the library world to bibliodiversity and uncertain about what that might mean for their work, could turn to the introduction to bibliodiversity and scholarly communication developed by Allison Kittinger and Jennifer Solomon at UNC Chapel Hill. Let me give a special shout out to Allison, who was an LIS student at the time. She's now gainfully employed as a scholarly communication librarian. But such a curious librarian might consult this, this resource to get a basic foundation and to think about bibliodiversity's applications in their field. Finally, we aspire for the SEN to be a platform, a space to listen to new voices in the field, to hear about the experience of scholars outside of the big research universities, and to consider the implications of scholarly communication and the choices it involves for a diverse population of researchers, educators, and learners. Here we see that platform being used by Tatiana Bryant, the research librarian for digital humanities history and African-American studies at UC, UC Irvine um, in a module that is designed to help students understand and consider how qualitative research methods can support their praxis. We see it being used by Natalie Hill at the University of New England and Jessica Dye from the University of West Virginia, who work together to create case studies and teaching materials that ask participants to consider how our advocacy for OER and related open practices might have disparate impacts, particularly on those with less intersectional power and privilege. We hope you'll find an opportunity to listen to their voices. We also hope that you'll agree that the SEN already contains a rich body of work. We're very excited about that work, but we're just getting started. So we'd like to conclude by sharing with you some of the places we plan to go next. We're so excited to continue to roll out the resources that are currently just about ready for prime time. Our open textbook will be released in 2022 and begin to be used in LIS courses. Along with the book, we're excited to see how the SCN can be what we hope it will be as a dynamic space that supplements the book in the classroom and supports open pedagogy assignments for students using the book. We also know that the book and the website will benefit from scaffolding that supports use in the classroom. So we'll be developing some resources that make using these materials easier and demonstrate some potential applications and opportunities, maybe something like a teacher's edition. We're also inspired by the opportunities for continual improvement that are baked into open resources. We're particularly excited by the new potential offered by the Code of Best Practice and Fair Use for OER that opens a lot of new doors for every resource in the SCN. We plan to work with educators to keep building pedagogical apparatus that connects and refreshes resources within SCALCOM and across other disciplines. We've also been thinking a lot about how to make resources that are often primarily textual into something more beautiful and inviting. Simple updates like adding cover images and illustrations can make a huge difference in terms of the quality and credibility of individual resources in the SCN. We've also been intentional about accessibility throughout this work, and we have an ongoing commitment to making that a priority. And the core of our work continues to be inclusion and representation. We've put a lot of time and resources into filling gaps and highlighting voices, but there's so much more work to be done. Finally, we know that this project will live or die based on community engagement. We've been intentional about beginning with a North American audience in mind, since that's where we live and work, 
but we're already getting great interest from international Skullcom communities. As Skullcom is increasingly recognized as inherently a global effort, decentering North America and incorporating more global perspectives will be critical. We've also had some exciting discussions about how to tap into the rich set of open materials that aren't quite educational resources quite yet, but could be. More on that soon. We also hope to continue to expand the community and workshops. Parallel to a lot of this work, we've been holding workshops at conferences such as the Collective and ACRL, focused on helping people develop micro OER in a three to four hour time frame. We're excited to continue and expand that engagement as well. As mentioned, we've also just launched our third call for proposals. With that great support from IMLS, we're able to offer 2,500 to a set of projects to develop new OER that fill gaps and highlight underrepresented voices in scholarly communication. We hope you'll take a look and consider contributing your own ideas. Thank you so much for joining us virtually for this overview of the SCN. We're excited to continue to build momentum. So please reach out to us through our website, via email or on Twitter and submit a proposal through our call for proposals. We can't wait to hear from you.